Hi, this is Jack Lufton, and this is Critical Materials Corner for February 16th, 2021. Today, I'm, I, my topic is going to be war games. Why is that? Because today, the Chinese announced, according to the Financial Times of London and the Wall Street Journal of the U.S., that they, they want to consider what would happen to the U.S. defense industry if the Chinese cut off our supply of rare earth or, and rare earth enabled products. At least that's what the newspapers say. Of course, that isn't exactly correct uh, because the people who write these stories are not very worldly. Uh, the defense departments of the, of the world uh, have play something they call war games. And war games mean they consider all possibilities that might happen to their country and what would be the consequences of those uh, possibilities. In this case, the I'm sure that the Chinese bureaucracy was inquiring of the Chinese mining industry, what do you think would happen if we stopped exporting wares to, to the United States or rare earth enabled products? And the Chinese ministries that formulate policy or carry out policy always do this. Ten years ago, they inquired of the same industry, what if we stopped shipping heavy rare earths and thus created the seeds of the rare earth crisis of 2010 and 11. And this is bureaucrats trying to determine how they're going to respond to the uh, people who tell them what to do. In the case of the United States, we are reactive. We wait for somebody to uh, attack us, and so to speak, and then we react. The Chinese are proactive. They, they take a very long-term view of things, and, and they decide what they should do in order to achieve their long-term goals. And then they start uh, implementing uh, the policies and, and to, to get those goals accomplished. In this case, I think what's happening, and I think what, what no one seems to understand on this side of the Pacific, is that uh, President Xi of China has made very clear that he wants the Chinese economy to develop into what he calls a, a two-circulation model. And what that seems to mean is that the Chinese domestic consumer economy will, will be encouraged to grow until it meets and then exceeds the Chinese export economy. And what that means is, uh, they, they said the other day that they've, in the last uh, few years, they brought 100 million Chinese people out of poverty by these policies, these long-term policies. So what I think is really happening is that we're ignoring the fact that in the last five years, China's gone from a non-importer of raw materials for, to, to uh, make rare earth products to importing nearly 40% of what it needs. Why is that? One theory is that the Chinese deposits are, are running out of high-grade materials, getting more and more expensive to extract them. Another theory is that they want to conserve the, what they have and a third theory is that the heavy rare earths production, in particular in China, has been extremely polluting, and they want to stop that and remediate. All three of these theories are, in fact, correct. They're all three are drivers of, of the Chinese rare earth economy. Now, they are planning to supply every Chinese home with a television set, vacuum cleaner, a dishwasher, clothes washer, everybody's going to have an electric car, and power is going to come from alternate energy produced by wind, solar, and nuclear. So there, the Chinese take a look at the, at the consequences of these decisions, and they say, you know what? We're going to need more rare earth permanent magnets in 2025 than we've produced this year, but we're, we're exporting a lot of those magnets in, in finished goods. So 
we're not going to be able to continue doing that and grow our domestic economy as the president has required. Now, I didn't say requested. Now, I said required. So what's happening is China is growing economically. China, China has adopted the idea that they need to be a consumer economy just like the United States. Uh, I, I thought this is what we were encouraging them to do, to, to mimic us. But in order to do that, unlike the United States, which depends on the idea that the market will supply your needs, all you have to do is keep raising the price and you'll get anything you want. The Chinese know this isn't true. And so they, they are organizing themselves and have organized themselves to acquire the necessary raw materials. And those necessary raw materials for a green economy are rare earths, lithium, cobalt, copper, nickel. And each one of these materials I've just named, the primary demand for those materials on this planet comes from China. 50 to 60% of all demand for the metals I just named comes from China. So why would they want to implement policies to lower their supply? In fact, they're, they're on a world mission to make sure they have sufficient supplies to carry out their long-term plans, their five-year, 10-year, 15-year plans. That's what's going on. Now, what does it mean for us? It means a technology metals boom. Technology metals are almost all critical metals because they're used for electrical and electronic purposes. Are, is there going to be a, a commodity boom in Base metals, if you call copper a base metal, I guess so. In case uh, my viewers haven't noticed, copper is now at the highest price it's been in a decade. Why is that? Because it's the key technology metal. You, you can produce electricity any way you want. You can use electricity any way you want. But to get it from the producer to the end user, you need copper. Miles and millions of miles of copper wire and millions of tons. The world is now producing some 30 million tons of copper, new copper a year, and we're recycling a, a lot of it. But even so, the price is going up. What does that tell you? Demand is exceeding supply. And as China and India wire entire continents, subcontinents, uh, the demand isn't going to get less. And the problem with copper, or not the problem, but the reality of copper is that to wire a new home takes a quarter ton of copper, and a new home well built will last for 50 to 100 years. So that copper, it might be recycled in your great-grandson's time, uh, but it's not going to be recycled anytime soon. So it's going into, it's not going into supply, it, it's, it's being, I don't, there's a word for this, I don't know, but it, it's locked up, it's locked up. Okay, so now we have that. Cars, electric cars, use more copper than internal combustion engine cars. They, I'm told that some electric cars use as much as 100 pounds of copper. And uh, there are nearly 100 million cars and trucks made each year. Multiply that 100 million times 100, and you get 10 billion pounds. That's a lot of copper every year. However, we do recycle cars at, at the rate of about... Uh, Five percent a year of the, of the world fleet is, is 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 turned over, so that copper is returned. But but copper is going into you might as well call it a sink, which is our civilization. Copper is the key. We have to have technology metals to make the devices that that we use to convert electricity into sound, motion, information, light. For that, we need technology metals then we need copper to carry it and to produce it. If we're going to produce electricity by alternate means, we have nuclear, uh, which requires uranium. We have uh, all, uh, wind, uh, wind driven and the, the least uh, maintenance is required by direct drive wind turbines, which require rare earth permanent magnets uh, to operate. And, and a typical wind turbine will have one half to one ton of magnet. And there are a lot of wind turbines around. Solar, you need you need uh, materials like silver. You need materials like gallium. 
uh, you need cadmium, you need tellurium. Uh, gee, as far as I know, other than silver, not any of those are produced in the United States in any quantity near our demand. The Chinese, of course, use many, many more times these materials than we do. So what's the bottom line here is critical materials, I call this critical materials and common sense. I think that the biggest surprise to the United States federal government's bureaucracy is that they are they, they are, have to be careful because they're going to get what they wish for. If they want to turn the U.S. green in any percentage, they're going to have to ramp up mining, sourcing, refining, metal making, alloy making, all kinds of industries that require enormous amounts of electrical power, and they require base load. You cannot produce steel in an electric arc furnace with a wind turbine. I would like to see, I'd like to know, maybe there are, is there any factory in the United States manufacturing goods out of steel or aluminum that is run strictly by wind and solar? I'd love to hear about it. I'd also like to know if there's an electric arc furnace running in North America off, off wind or solar power, or if there's a steel mill that, that's, that's running off wind or solar power. People don't seem to under, uh, understand that you need a lot of electricity. It has to be constant. It has to be ongoing in order for industrial processes to occur. You cannot turn off an electric arc furnace and say, we'll wait for the batteries to recharge from the solar or, or wind. That doesn't work. So is there going to be a metals boom? Yes. Is, is it driven by the green economy? Partially. What else is driving it? The, the buildup of China into a major world economic power. And of course, you say that's already occurred. Well, I think that uh, probably half of China doesn't have uh, an electric grid. And so they're building gigantic fields of wind turbines, solar panels in China to serve areas where it would be too expensive to extend a grid or build, or build a baseload power plant. They're consuming more of the technology metals than they can produce internally and for the last four years, while we've been concerned in America about silly politics, the Chinese have been grabbing up the world's supplies of technology metals. And I don't mean on a one-off. They, they've bought mines. They've made commitments to, for long-term supply. They've built the processing in their country so that they don't need to worry about importing finished goods. They have 80% of the world's cobalt processing uh, capacity. 60% for lithium, 60% for copper, maybe 90% for rare earths. This is going to drive the prices of all of these materials up. That's, there's no question about it. So are, are, they, are they good investments? I suppose if you're investing in a company that can actually produce these products, the answer is yes. But I caution you to look at, at your investments and to think about whether or not the company you're investing in really can contribute to this supply chain. That that's the key that's the key question from now on. And I'll be talking about individual critical metals next week and, and, and after that. But I, I did want I wanted to speak today about this story about China uh, uh, you know planning to use rare earths as a as a as a weapon or a counter weapon against us. I, I think what what we what we fail to see is that China just wants to be China. And uh, I don't think they're really concerned about how it affects us at all. Thanks, and talk to you next week.